This is Mac OS Ken. Good news for App Store revenue, bad news for App Store users in China, and word of OS updates, big and small. It is Wednesday, the 4th of October, 2023. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. A new note from one analyst has some good news from Apple. Seeking Alpha highlights a note from B of A analyst Wamsi Mohan. That's got the analyst seeing strong performance for the App Store in general and in China in particular. On the App Store generally, Mr. Mohan has numbers from Sensor Tower showing revenue and downloads up for the latest quarter. The way they see it, App Store revenue was up a little over 8.5% for the September quarter versus the same quarter a year ago, coming in at 67 billion dollars. According to the firm's findings, downloads for both iPhone and iPad rose 5.9% year over year. Shifting our focus to the Middle Kingdom, App Store revenue in China rose 9% year over year, according to the report. Seeking Alpha has Mohan indicating that even with the concern about iPhone bans at certain government agencies in China, the strong data in September is promising for Apple. Despite the good tidings, Mr. Mohan's still kind of meh on Apple shares. He's got a hold rating on the company's stock, though a kind of upbeat 12-month target of 208 bucks. Ticker symbol AAPL closed down about 35 Tuesday, ending the day at 172.40. Speaking of the App Store and China, There's this big, messy thing going on that I've been having trouble getting my head around. Could help, I suppose, if I were in China, but then I probably couldn't talk to you about it. According to a piece from Mac Rumors, Apple has started requiring new apps to show proof of a Chinese government license in order to be listed on the App Store in China. Reports I've seen about this revolve around apps that are pretty much illegal in China, though still offered on the App Store. Quoting Mac Rumors, China already blocks the websites of many popular Western social media apps like Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, but iPhone users in China have been able to download their apps from Apple's App Store by using unauthorized VPN services that connect them to an internet server outside the country. Now, for those apps to be offered in the App Store in China, developers like Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube would either need to have a business set up in the country, and one assumes store user data in China, or work with a local publisher. Of course, that local publisher would be under the thumb of the Chinese authorities, which some seem to see as a non-starter. Quoting Mac Rumors again, most foreign app operators are unlikely to register with the Chinese government because doing so would force them to comply with data transfer and censorship requirements. This will leave Apple with no choice but to remove them or face legal sanctions. If you're wondering when all of this goes down, six years ago and or nine months from now. The piece says local app stores run by the likes of Tencent and Huawei have been operating under a version of these rules since 2017. As for Apple's app store, MacRumor says apps not in compliance will either have to be registered with the Chinese government or out of the app store by July of 2024. Staying on the other side of the planet from here, Apple has lost an appeal against the Russian government in a Russian court. Hard to imagine, isn't it? And yet, a piece from Apple Insider says a Russian court has rejected Apple's appeal against a 1.2 billion ruble, $12 million U.S. fine imposed in January for alleged abuse of its dominant market position in in in-app payments. The fine is said to stem from Apple's requirement that developers use its in-app payment system rather than allowing apps to link to third-party payment processors. 
Russia's Federal Anti-Monopoly Service said that that violated competition rules, a stance with which Russian courts apparently agree. The parade of OS betas rolls on. Mac Rumors posted a few pieces on Tuesday saying that Apple had seeded the second betas of iOS and iPadOS 17.1 to developers, along with the second beta of macOS 14.1, watchOS 10.1, tvOS 17.1, and the fourth beta of Vision OS. Public testers can likely expect those in the next couple of days. Vision OS not included. There's another iOS update likely to hit long before iOS 17.1 makes the scene. Yet another piece from Mac Rumors says it can confirm that Apple is now internally testing iOS 17.0.3. The piece doesn't say how Mac Rumors can confirm that, though. I suspect it has to do with the OS being identified in that site's server logs. As for what the dot dot update does... Mac Rumor suspects it is meant to address overheating for some iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max units. Apple promised a fix for that issue over the past weekend. Perhaps realizing it cannot beat them, credit and debit cards from PayPal and Venmo are finally joining Apple Wallet and Apple Pay. I told you last month that some users of those cards were able to add them to Apple Wallet, seemingly making good on a promise PayPal had made back in November of 2022. Wasn't working for everyone, though, leading Apple Insider to suspect we were seeing a slow, soft launch before a full rollout. Now the full rollout. Seeking Alpha ran a piece Tuesday saying PayPal and Venmo credit or debit card holders can now link their cards to Apple Pay. According to a PayPal press release on the feature, users will get the same cash back and rewards points using their cards through Apple Pay as they normally get using their physical cards. HomePod has found yet another home in Apple's refurbished store. I told you yesterday that Apple's full-size smart speaker, reintroduced earlier this year, had landed among Apple's like new offerings. The refurbished speaker was said to be available in Australia, a number of European countries, Japan, New Zealand, and the UK, among other regions. Now, it's made its way to the States. A piece from Cult of Mac says the device has turned up in Apple's refurbished store for the U.S., Priced at $299 new, the report says the like-new units are going for $249, a discount of 17%. The medical peeps at Stanford University are running another Apple Watch study, this one geared toward the younger set. The site My Healthy Apple says the university will study whether Apple's wearable can help healthcare teams identify arrhythmia or irregular heartbeat in children and young adults. For participants aged 6 to 21, the report says leveraging wearable technologies for arrhythmia detection in children, the pediatric Apple Watch study, is looking to determine the accuracy of Apple Watch ECG tracing's heart rate in children and determine if extended monitoring with the Apple Watch can identify arrhythmia events that were not detected by short-term clinical monitoring. If successful, the study's findings could fill a sizable hole. Apple Watch is already FDA-approved for arrhythmia detection for people 22 years and older. While kids under 6 may not be able to use the trigger features on the watch and cardiac rhythm monitor, use for that middle group could be key for doctors and patients. And finally today... News of a new series hitting Apple TV Plus in the new year. Cult of Max, as the Cupertino streamer, has offered a first look at the eight-episode crime thriller, Criminal Record. Four words that make me want to see it are Peter Capaldi and Cush Jumbo. If you need more words than that, Apple's description of the show says Criminal Record is a powerful, character-driven drama set in the heart of contemporary London, An anonymous phone call draws two brilliant detectives into a confrontation over an old murder case, 
One young woman, played by Jumbo, in the early stages of her career. The other, a well-connected man, played by Capaldi, determined to protect his legacy. The series touches on issues of race, institutional failure, and the quest to find common ground in a polarized Britain. Wouldn't it be funny if they didn't? I mean, not really, but... Kinda. Decent wait for this one. The series starts its run on the 12th of January, 2024. No trailer yet, but you can stare at the pictures of the actors in the Apple TV Plus online newsroom. Mac OS Can, brought to you by me and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4084. Until next time, that is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.